Hey everybody, it's Chris. I apologize for the delay, but it's finally time to look at Latitude 64's newest fairway driver, the Royal Grand Glory. The Glory is going to have flight number 7503. It has a 1.8 centimeter rim, so it does feel more like a traditional fairway driver. It's not like the faster fairway drivers like the Escape or the Getaway. Uh, it should feel really nice in just about any hand uh, for those considerations. With those flight numbers of 7503, it is going to be a fairly overstable disc, not Felon, uh, not Audi, not uh, Pioneer, sorry I was struggling with that one, not that overstable, but fairly overstable, it's good, especially if you're a slower arm, and you're going to see that when I slow down the disc a little bit. Part of the reason for the delay of this is that I just wasn't throwing super well, so I wasn't getting very good video footage of it, um, but I have some thoughts on that, and I'm going to explain it in just a bit. So, with the, with the structure of this disc, and then flight numbers, I thought obvious comparison would be the Evader, around the same speed, just a little bit less overstable. I also pulled out a Lucid X Evader. These are much more overstable than the Lucid, and I, I, it was just a little bit too overstable for the comparison. And I'd seen somebody online say compare it to a Trident. Um, so two things happened. One, it actually did fly fairly similar to this Trident, but also this Trident is more broken in than I thought as well. Um, so maybe it is fairly similar. I didn't get nearly as much ground action out of the Glory as the Trident, which I think is one of the best skipping discs of all time. But you'll see all three of these discs. This is going to be the main comparison. Um, I think as that main fairway slot, uh, the Evader is probably the closest comparison, but that said, the Glory is definitely more overstable. So what can you expect? As I said, this is a fairly overstable disc. If I was tilting it out, I would get a nice flex, fly, flex line and then a very reliable fade. If I kept it flat, it was just going to drift left. It wanted, to, it wanted to act overstable. And if I slowed it down, it acted like a meat hook. Now, I'm not saying it is a meat hook. If you throw 300 feet or less on your max distance, it probably will just act like a baby felon for you. Uh, that said, it is in the, the Royal Plastic, so it feels great. Great grip. Um, it's a very beautiful disc, and as I said, it is going to be Rebecca Cox, maybe I didn't say this, it is going to be Rebecca Cox's signature disc. If you go on Dynamic Discs or Latitude 64, you're going to see her Elephant Stamp uh, Glories. Definitely go support her. This is a very cool disc. Um, I'm still working with my bag to see if I have the ability to throw it. Now, I mentioned not getting good footage, and here's what I think about this disc. If you throw under 350 feet, you're going to get those nice flex lines out of it and the nice overstable fly out of it. I think if you can throw 375 plus or 400 plus, you're going to get more out of this disc. It's kind of like the getaway where once it hits a certain speed, it really hits a sweet spot. Because the couple of times that I really did throw this well were the times that I got the pure snap, and most of these were not on film, I apologize. Um, I threw it just hard enough that it got to flatten up by itself, as opposed to me flexing it, and I got really long true flights and then really reliable fades. And those times that I hit that sweet spot where I had a little bit of extra snap in my throw, I thought this disc was amazing. So I'm going to keep working with it because I am trying to rebuild some of my arm speed, uh, and I feel like if I do that this disc could be a major contributor to my bag. I know I'm saying if over 375, I still think this disc has value. Slow arms as an overstable flyer, I think bigger arms are going to have more variety of shots with it. All right, I think that's all I've got. We're going to go to the footage. I'll talk some about the shots there, and I'll apologize because I think the best day I had with this disc was the day where I forgot to bring my camera. I felt kind of dumb on that one. Reviewer forgot to bring the camera, but it happens when you have kids on the course as well. So if you have any questions or comments, please put them below. As always, I love getting back to you on that, um, and thanks for watching. Here we go out to the course, but real quick, I want to say thank you to my sponsor, Hazy Shade, for these awesome jerseys you're going to see. I can't wait to represent both Dynamic Discs and Hazy Shade on the course and in these reviews wearing these great jerseys. Starting the review with just a couple 70% power shots, as you saw there. This is going to be a little bit harder, a little bit higher, but again, that natural overstable finish when thrown at lower power. I enjoyed throwing the Glory forehand as well. Here you can see me flexing it pretty hard to get a full flight. On this one, it's uphill, so I did flex it. It's just not as obvious because of the, the throwing up as well, but just a very standard overstable forehand there. I did promise one Lucid X Evader comparison. Here you can see the Lucid X never even comes close to flat on this throw. It's just a, little, uh, it's just a different level of stability from the Glory, so I, I didn't keep using it. Here comes the Trident. I mentioned it in the preview. I think maybe this one was just more broken in, or I've forgotten how overstable Tridents were. But you can see the Glory does act more overstable than the Trident. The Trident actually flattens up on this flight, whereas the Glory stays mostly hyzer the entire way. And on this forehand comparison, now part of it is my, my forehand is not consistent. 
but you'll see the Trident is a little bit flatter of a throw, whereas the Glory is on that swooping hyzer the entire time. Both shots actually turned out well, um, but you can see the stability of the Glory there with my slower forehand. Now we are going to move on to the Evader main comparison disc. What you're going to see is the Evader starts a little more inside. It is not as overstable. Those discs will end up in a nearly the identical locations, but that's going to be pretty common. I'm going to start the Evader or the Glory more outside because it is more overstable. Like on this, you see it's on more of a hyzer line. You're going to see a lot more action on the ground, a lot more skipping on the ground. Maybe it is more like the Trident on that front. I hadn't noticed that before. But those flights are just pretty characteristic of these two discs. The Evader I can start on the inside, have it drift and fall back to center, whereas the Glory is much more of a pure hyzer disc for me until it gets to a certain speed, as I talked about. This is probably my favorite comparison in the entire video. It's a big forced over Annie. Both discs are going to drift really hard right, but you're going to see the Glory check up here and end up within 15 feet of the pin, whereas the Evader actually just keeps going off the screen. That's the difference in stability on these two. Now lapping gold 14 is one of my favorite types of hole design. It starts with a right turn, it ends with a left turn, so I could throw a forehand and a backhand with the glory and you can really see what I think it does so well, just hold those pure hyzer lines on those lower speeds. Super quick recap, the glory is Latitude 64's newest fairway driver, it will be Rebecca Cox's signature disc, so make sure to support her. It's fairly overstable, especially at lower arm speeds, but higher arm speeds should be able to get really nice full flights out of it. As always, thanks you, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed or found informative, please feel free to like, share, or even subscribe to the channel. Thanks.